Hey yeah, I've got some final thoughts about this Polish combination lock. The creator, Zbigniew Olejnik, is trying to create the most secure lock in the world. Remember from my previous videos, this is retracted down, and then this is pulled out here, which releases the shackle. Okay. So that's how it works. Okay, I've pulled the guts out of this and look in my last video if you want details about how I decoded this lock. I go into more detail on how it works too. Basically, I had to turn this front knob from about the 12 o'clock position to the 20th pass position in order for this bar to go down between the true gates so that the lock would open. If the combination was slightly different, you can see that when the bar lowers, it is hitting false gates and it doesn't go all the way down and it won't open and it only moves to about the 10 past. Now I think what was happening, okay, see how that goes all the way down there and it doesn't here. When it hits a false gate like here, you can see how it is hitting the bar on the side, okay? Ideally, the bar should hit all of them at the same time, or all the false gates at the same time. If only the far wheel was a false gate and all the rest were true gates, you can see that it's applying pressure on the bar right at the end. And in a plastic lock, if the, enough force is applied downwards, in other words, if I turn this knob hard enough, then not hard enough to break it, but hard enough to make it flex just a little bit, then it means that I can turn this knob slightly more, enough to be able to detect whether I'm onto a false gate or a true gate. Let me explain how it works. This is how I think it works anyway. If it's all random combination, all mixed up, just let, let's say it's like this, all right? So it's, it's hitting here, and because this wheel is hitting the bar right up against this, there's no flex, okay? And the knob will only turn a certain amount, even with pressure, but when this first wheel is moved to a true gate, then the bar hits the next wheel along, and the flex, that a slight flex is enough, I think, to see a slight turn in this knob when I apply enough pressure. And then I keep going, I turn this inside wheel until I can see the knob turn even a little bit more. And what that means is that I have moved the true gate into the right position and the bar is hitting the next wheel along and it's making this bar flex. Okay? And I keep on doing that, I keep on turning the next wheel until I can see it even turn a little bit more. And that's because it's moved to the next position and the bar is hitting way out here, all right? And you can see that there is a massive difference between having all these wheels and true gates and only the this last one in a false gate is going to hit right at the end. It's going to be quite a bit of flex. And if I turn this to the this first wheel to the wrong one, suddenly I lose all that flex. And the visible difference between this position and this position is is very great enough for me to see it. And I wouldn't even need to use lasers to, to see it, okay? And so that's what I did. I kept on going until they were all in, in a true gate and the lock would open. So when I turn this front wheel, it, on the outside wheel, it moves this back wheel on the inside wheels, okay? So it's like back to front or a mirror image. So it means that I have to start with this wheel and keep on moving it around until I can turn the knob more and then I turn that second wheel and keep on moving it around and going this way. So if anyone comes across this plastic lock, 
that's the order you should do it in. Now note, in the metal version, this should not flex. All right, this only flexes because it's 3D printed plastic, it's not even solid plastic, and it flexes. That's how I think it works. The metal version hopefully will not flex, and if it doesn't, I won't be able to decode this lock, and it'll be a really secure lock. Okay, it's my final thoughts on this lock. Cheers.